So let's start with the idea of uh, photons. Do you, do you know what photons are? They're like particles that make up light. That's right. So photons are particles of light. That should already start to strike you as a little bit weird because we don't usually think of light as made out of particles. We've been thinking of it as a wave. Remember we were talking about how um, light gets diffracted and interferes. Well, that would be thinking of it as a wave. So now we're already diving into wave-particle duality. Even though when we talk about diffraction interference, we have to think of um, the light as a wave, it turns out that there's contexts where we have to think of it as a particle. Well, we need a name for those particles, so we call those photons. Photo is uh, Greek or Latin for light. So a photon is a particle of light. Um, by the way, do photons have mass? Yeah. Now, if you think about it, really photons have zero mass, right? Because uh, light. light doesn't weigh anything, right? That's the first weird thing about this particle. It seems weird to talk about a particle with no mass, but we have to imagine somehow a particle with no mass. Uh, we know that light doesn't have mass. Okay, so uh, photons have no mass. Oh, this is kind of associated with electrons. So. Pardon? Oh, yeah. So electrons have a teensy tiny mass, but photons have zero mass. All right, now um, let's think about our concept of wavelength. Oh, so I'm um, sorry, what we're going to do here is make one of our uh, patented flowcharts. So you might want to uh, take, uh, turn your paper horizontal, start a fresh piece of paper. Uh, here we'll be close to the left hand side, and we'll put some more concepts towards the right. So should put flows on this uh, Close to the left hand side here, kind of like I have on the board, and then we're going to move to the right over here. What's the symbol for wavelength? Lambda. Yeah. Greek letter L. Do you remember what the unit is for wavelength? Um, meters. That's right. Sometimes it's useful to think of it as meters per cycle, but truthfully, most people just say meters. That's good enough. That's measuring uh, the, the length of the, the wave. All right. Uh, now, remember in those flow charts, what we like to do is, uh, what do we like to do? We like to show two concepts that are related, like wavelength and frequency, and then above the arrow, we're going to write down the equation that relates those two things. All right, so uh, taking a look here at um, this, uh, what's the symbol for frequency? Okay, and what's the unit for frequency? Um, so it's That's good. So it's cycles per second. Good. The official name is Hertz, but we've seen that oftentimes you get more intuition if you think of the frequency as cycles per second. Sometimes people just say that the unit is one over seconds, but it's really best to think of it as cycles per second. Okay, so this is a concept we saw all the way back in the last semester, and it doesn't go away. Now, what's the equation that relates wavelength and frequency? Uh, v equals F. Good. Now, what type of wave are we focusing on here? Electromagnetic waves. Let's see. Yeah, and we'll, we'll, we'll think, imagine that we're in a vacuum or we're in the air when the speed is close to the speed in the vacuum. So we may as well write the equation. C equals F lambda. So this is an equation you probably already had to use on solving homework problems. So this lets us go back and forth between frequency and wavelength. So if the frequency is big, what does that tell you about the wavelength? Yeah, there's an inverse relation because in, uh, in, the, sing in, the, vac in the vacuum, the speed is constant. Um, so you, when you put photons in a colon, uh, no, sorry, what I mean is this flowchart refers to photons. Okay. And in a couple minutes, we're going to do a flowchart about electrons, okay. maybe down here. So this is a flow, these are concepts for photons. After all, only photons would go at the speed of light. Right. That's what allowed me to put the C in this formula here. Okay. All right, so we're actually kind of tying together our wave-particle duality already. Um, we're saying that even though we're thinking of particles of light, we're still thinking of them as having wavelengths as well. Now, um, our next concept here would be energy. And here it's conventional to use E for energy. Uh, what's the unit for energy? Joules. Right. However, um, a joule is a pretty big unit. And remember that uh, in this chapter, we're going to be focusing on things that are very small at the subatomic level where the joule is too big. So usually they use a different unit for energy at the subatomic level. Uh, I don't know if you know, what's the unit for energy we usually use at the atomic or subatomic level? Is it not kilojoule? 
uh, that would be even bigger, right? We want a smaller unit of energy, um, but actually the unit that we usually use here is the electron volt. Why don't we actually take a detour and, and review that right now? So, um, remind me, what is a volt? It's been a while since we talked about that. Do you remember what a volt is? It's a, the, the energy of one coulomb, positive one coulomb test charge at a certain point. That's true. Uh, let's see. Well, uh, so you're thinking of the potential. The potential would tell you how much energy a one coulomb charge would have at a point. So, okay, so what are the units for a volt? Oh, it's um, joules per coulomb. Yeah, maybe we, we're going to have to use all those concepts again. So let's go through and uh, review those key concepts here. So do we have the electric potential energy. Uh, what's the symbol for electric potential energy? U. Yeah. And what's its unit? The standard SI unit? A joule. Okay. And then we have electric potential. What's the symbol for electric potential? Uh, v. Capital V. Good. Um, and uh, what's the unit for electric potential? A volt. Good. And what are the component units of a volt? So it's the joule times a coulomb? It's actually joules per coulomb. Per coulomb. Joules per coulomb. Yeah, um, this is one of the biggest stumbling blocks people have in this course. They never quite memorize what a volt is, uh, but it keeps coming up in different aspects of the course. So this is a very important concept to make a flashcard. A volt is joules per coulomb. Okay. Uh, that's our symbol for electrical potential. Um, remember the interpretation is, what does it mean if you have a potential of 5 volts at a point in space? So five joules. Well, that means that if you put a 1 coulomb charge at this point, it would have an energy of 5 joules. But if you put a 2 coulomb charge here, it would have an energy of 10 joules, or whatever. All right, now I should say, actually, at this point in the course, we don't usually care that much about energy and potential. We usually care about energy change and potential difference. So usually we'll be focusing on delta U and delta V, energy change and potential difference. Although, as a confusing complication, we've talked about, um, in fact, because people usually focus on potential difference and they rarely focus on potential, people get lazy and they write V when they really mean potential difference. So oftentimes, even when people really mean delta V, they're still going to write V. So we, we might end up doing that uh, ourselves. So what does it mean if you have a delta V of 5 volts between two points, say between two planes of a capacitor? You would say the energy it takes to move that one coulomb charge from one to the other. That's right. Or the energy that it gains. That's well put. That's the meaning that we'll be focusing on more today. So if we have a 5 volt capacitor, that means that if we moved a 1 coulomb charge between the plates, um, it, well, if we let it fall between the plates, it would gain 5 joules of energy. Or if we moved it to the plate it didn't want to be at, we'd have to put in 5 joules. Uh, okay. You know what this symbol stands for? Um, it's a, oh, the elementary charge. Yeah. It's the charge of who? Of the electron. Yeah, or of a proton. It's the magnitude of the charge on an electron and a proton. Remember how big that charge is? 1.6. And what would be the units on that? Coulombs. Uh, Good. All right, so lowercase e stands for the charge on a proton, the magnitude of the charge on an electron or a proton. You can see this is a very small number, but that's because electrons and protons are very small. Now this is an electron volt. Here we have this concept of an electron volt. Now what is an electron volt a unit of? Well, let's see if we can work that out. What does the E stand for? Oh, joules. E, yeah. is, e is coulombs. V is joules per coulomb. So e, v is of energy. Yeah, okay.
Okay, it looks like you worked that out. That's good. All right, so we could erase the E and replace it with 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. That's what little e means. And we can replace the V and replace it with joules per coulomb. That's what V means. And then if we do unit analysis, the coulombs cancel. This is the, exactly what you were saying. So is an electron volt a unit of energy or a unit of potential? Energy. Yeah. But this really confuses people because they, they've just got finished congratulating themselves on figuring out that V is a unit for potential. Uh, and then it really throws them for a loop that EV is a unit for energy. All right, but you can see how that works out with the units here. 